Hello everyone and welcome back to English with Lucy and William. Yeah, part three. Yeah, it's your third time, isn't it? Yeah. We've had a couple on my personal channel and we did a conversation video the other day on this channel. Loads of you seem to really like it and have asked for William to come back. <laughs> well, I live here, so... <laughs> well, we thought we would do another, but also incorporate your questions. So today's topic is pastimes and hobbies. You have a lot of those, don't yeah, you? Yeah, I've got a few. got a few I can contribute. So I put a post on the community tab asking you what questions you have about British people's hobbies and pastimes and also ours. So I think we should have a look. Okay. I have created a PDF for you with lots of the vocabulary that I have pulled from our conversation. So click on the link in the description box to download that. You enter your name, your email address, you sign up to my mailing list and it is sent straight to your inbox. So don't forget to do that. Okay. So Daniel from Italy, because everyone has said where they're from, I think that's so nice. Uh, Daniel from Italy has a question about whether we maintain our hobbies or are we super enthusiastic at the beginning and then after a few weeks we give up and get bored? Yeah, I'm pretty good at maintaining my hobbies. So I see a lot of things on Instagram like crafts and making things and baking beautiful cakes and I always feel so enthusiastic at the beginning and then towards the end I just think it's so much work but with other things like running that's been a hobby I've had for so long and making cards for my family that's another one what are yours? Uh, mine are mainly sport related hobbies so rugby, football, golf um, I could go on if you'd like a few more. <laughs> <laughs> Watching rugby or playing rugby? I probably watch more than I ever used to because I used to play a lot of rugby but now um, I don't play as much rugby as I used to but I do both. Yes, so one of Will's main hobbies used to be playing rugby but what happened? <laughs> couple of reasons why I had to stop. Um, the main one being injuries. I, I used to get injured every Saturday playing. Um, I remember you coming home with a fat lip. <laughs> yeah, and a fat eye. And just... Yes, well we have a black eye and a fat lip, yeah. don't we? Those are common oh, injuries. A fat eye and a black lip, that's what I had. <laughs> also another reason was time. I mean, when you start working, especially if you work on a farm, it's so hard to take time off because you depend on the weather, don't you? Yeah. Oh, we have a lovely question from Paulina. She is Russian, but she lives in Estonia. She says, what are your favorite British TV shows? Cool. Good question. So the first show that comes to mind is Mock the Week. It's yes. a comedy show based on uh, recent news and comedians are on the panel and they make a joke uh, about current affairs. Yeah, that's a great TV show. I think I actually recommended that in a video before. So great minds think alike. Yeah. Uh, another one that I always recommend but I absolutely love is The Vicar of Dibley. <laughs> I've been watching that, it a lot recently. That will never get old. No, it's so good because in the UK They've brought out a new equivalent to Netflix called BritBox and a couple of the TV stations have got together and kind of made a collaboration. Mm -hmm. So all of the old favourite comedies and TV shows are all on this one streaming service and it's not very expensive so I have been going crazy just a little bit, yes. <laughs> watching all of my old favourite TV programmes. But The Vicar of Dibley is a vicar, played by Dawn French, one of my favourite comedians. She moves to a very small village in Oxfordshire, I think, and it's about her trials and tribulations of running a church in such a small backwards village. Okay, we have a good one from Mohammed from Algeria. He asks, in general, what is the one morning hobby that many Brits like doing on their weekends? 
Well, we've spoken about a fry up before, like a full English breakfast. That's not a hobby. Yeah, it's not a hobby. Is it eating? (laughs) It's one of my hobbies. I think gardening. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, a lot of British people love gardening. Well, I'm sure people everywhere love gardening, but especially in lockdown. All the garden centres were overrun with people. Everything was completely sold out. The people who normally didn't have enough time to garden, well, suddenly did. And yeah, garden centres did a really good trade. Now everyone's lawns are looking immaculate. Yes. (laughs) I would say another one could be golf. Yes, that's a very popular sport. Yes, because it's quite relaxed. I mean, I've never played golf. I've got no coordination. But what, what do you like about it? Um, that used to be my hangover cure at university. <laughs> <laughs> We've managed to mention hangovers in every video now, I think. Yeah. We, um, it's good, stretch your legs. It's, um, it's quite a leisurely social sport as well. You normally do it with at least two to four people. Uh, it's good for a catch up. It's not, anyone can play golf. Really? Well. Anyone can Me. play golf. <laughs> Well, it'll take some people longer than others, but you don't have to be exceptionally fit, you know. It's true. If you don't want to walk, just order a trolley. My granddad played golf until he was in his 90s and he used to win. He won champagne and he used to drink it. He was such a great man. We have one from Sanya from India. She hopes that we're both safe and well. That's very kind of you, Sanya. That is very kind. We hope you're well as well. Yes. Or safe. Safe and safe, well. Safe and well, rather than Everyone. Well. <laughs> she asks, which hobbies do both you and Will share? So do we have any of the same hobbies? You've got sport as your hobbies. Mm-hmm. Mine are running. I love exercise classes. My favourite ones are body pump, which is like a cardio workout with weights. Um, I also love bar pilates, where you do little movements, ballet movements. It's not dancing, but ballet movements and Pilates at the same time. The last time you tried doing that was when you were trying to show how to use a gym. When was that? You started doing squats oh, and yeah. chin-ups. And In the last so video. bar Pilates and doing the gym chin-ups <laughs> looks exactly the same. Uh, I also like being creative. I like cooking and I love making cards for my family for their birthdays. What else do I like? Shopping. You hate driving. No I bad. hate driving, that's true. But are there any hobbies that we both love and we can do together? Uh, going for long walks in the countryside. That's a big part of being a farmer and a farmer's wife to be. Um, yeah, I love going on walks. I probably enjoy them slightly more than you. Well, I spend most of my day outside walking anyway <laughs> around the farm, so sometimes the last thing I want to do at the end of the day is go for another two three mile walk yeah that's true i guess in general just spending time with our dog and now our cat as well that's something anything that makes them happy i think we are very good with food i cook the food you eat the food we both share the hobby of food but i'm definitely cooking a lot more now (laughs) that's true will has upped his game where it oh, comes yes, I have. to cooking. I got served the most beautiful salad today with chicken, bacon, sweet corn, avocado, walnuts, walnuts, coriander, even though you don't stop. like coriander. Just stop, stop. <laughs> You're doing such a good job. So Ziad from Azerbaijan says, do people in Great Britain like motorsports? Yes. There's... I think we're obsessed with them. Yes, oh, I like motorsports. Your dad likes motorsports. Yes, my dad loves F1 racing. But the thing is, he's also very efficient with his time. So he can never spend hours and hours watching it. He records it and then he'll spend like 20 minutes fast forwarding through the highlights. <laughs> so he doesn't give himself enough time to relax. The main interesting bits of a Formula One race are the beginning, the middle where they do the pit stops and then the last few few laps. Everything else is nap nap time, basically. It's a bit noisy for me, the new, new. I find that quite a stressful noise. I would like to go. I'd like to see what it smells like. I imagine it smells like petrol. You need um, ear defenders. Oh, do you? Yeah. Yeah, oh, maybe I wouldn't like it. The noise is 
I, sh I should think it was a lot louder than it is now, but still. Yeah. Okay, we have Salma from Morocco. I think she's also an English teacher, actually. Her name is English with Salma, so shout out to her. She wants to know what are the most common hobbies in England? The most common ones. Football. Football's definitely up there. Has to be football. Fishing. I think that is probably one of the most participated sports uh, in the country, or de activities, shall we say. I don't know if I'd say it's the most popular, but maybe it's because I don't talk to many people who fish. But there are a lot of fishing lakes, and you don't keep the fish, do you? You just no. catch them and fly, put them back fly in. Fly fishing, you catch them and then release them. Well, it's a bit mean, isn't it? But okay. <laughs> Prince from Sudan says, how do we entertain ourselves when we feel bored? This is a really depressing answer. Anytime anyone feels bored, they just use their phone, don't they? No, we don't. We do. Okay, we do. But during lockdown, much. we played quite a few board games. Oh, that's true. That's one of the activities yeah. that we love doing together. Yeah. The board game about patchwork. That, didn't we? All those fun times we had just yeah. forgotten. Six months of board games. Um, so we found a board game and we fell in love with it. It's called Patchwork and it's like Tetris, but in a board game. It's very, very good. I won't try to explain it. You need to read the instructions, but I will link it down below because it is fantastic and we bought it for all of our friends and family. Olivika from India wants to know how we would describe our perfect day. Oh, I'd say Sunday. Yeah, well, it would be a Sunday. Actually, no, I prefer Saturday because then you know you've still got Sunday, but a Sunday roast forms part of my perfect day, so it has to be a Sunday. Yours? Yeah. Yeah, that's part of mine as well. Um, an afternoon watching a rugby match would be involved in mine. <laughs> sorry, Yay! Sorry, I would, wouldn't have to watch a lot, but... No, I'd watch just, it with you. Just the one would be fine. For your perfect day, I'd, I'd be there watching. Not understanding what's going on, but watching. I think it would involve a dog walk, seeing my parents and my brother as well, that would be part of it, and... My friends Ellie and Felicity. I don't know, just seeing the people you love. And I'd also like to go on a run and do an exercise class because that always makes me feel good. I'd do that first. So this is an interesting one. Emir Hansen, who is from Turkey, wants to know if there are any hobbies that are not common around British people. For example, extreme sports, exotic animals. I'm thinking you've lived in New Zealand, I've lived in Spain. Were there any hobbies that we saw in those other countries that we don't see in the UK? So there was one for me in Spain, paddle. There was this sport, it looked like tennis, but with a really small racket called paddle. And I swear I have never seen that sport in the UK, but they really took it seriously out there. I think they were in the Olympics. Yeah. Well, maybe, maybe not. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not sure about New Zealand. I'd say New Zealand is quite a predominantly farming country, so they would share quite a few of the things that I would do around here. So I'm not sure about New Zealand. What don't we do? We don't here? ski. I I was thinking we have no mountains. Here we don't to ski, go but it's very popular to go abroad skiing. Yeah. A lot of people do that. I've never been skiing before. I've never been to a skiing location. That's something I'd, I'd like, like to do. I'd like to take you to a ski resort. You can take me, definitely. <laughs> Miguel from Spain wants to know if we play any musical instruments. Do you want to start? Tell them your instrument. I used to play a musical instrument and then we ended up selling it to uh, a family member. <laughs> I used to play the drums. I played the drums for about six years, I think it was. Wow. Five, five or six years. Did you do any grades? I didn't do grades, but I did enter competitions. Oh. Yes, I did. Uh, I never won. Oh. I always came second or third. Mm. Um, but it was at school. And I remember one competition in particular, I was playing to a soundtrack in the background and uh, and I was just in the moment I was just playing along and I completely lost where I was uh, looking at the music book and the music in the background had actually stopped and I just carried on playing <laughs> and everyone in the crowd was just 
they didn't know whether to applaud, to tell me to stop, or I uh, ended up carrying on playing for another 15 seconds. So. I thought we were going to say 15 minutes. There. No, I was another thinking... 15 seconds. I was looking at my teacher to the side, and he was just like, <laughs> you're done, you're done, well done. So my dad plays the drums, but he set up a soundproofed room above the garage so that he wouldn't disturb us. But the problem was it was next to my bedroom. But I used to find it quite soothing. I could just hear like a little heartbeat or sometimes a very fast heartbeat in my ear. He's Um, much better than I ever was. He's excellent, my dad, at the drums. And he also plays the violin. And so me and my brother also took up the violin as well. And we played until we were 18 and then we stopped. Um, But sometimes when I go home, I will pick up the violin with my dad and we'll play a duet together. That's something I really like doing. Maybe when I'm older, I will buy a violin and play a bit here, but I don't have the urge at the moment. You can sing, Luce. Uh, I don't, I don't sing. sing. I occasionally sing. sing. She doesn't like to sing in public, but she sings. I do sing every now and well. again. <laughs> um, I only sing for my parents' birthdays. So if my parents have a party, I know that it's their favourite thing when I sing. And, but even though I find it so embarrassing, I will do it for them. Uh, but that's it. But it's my dad's 60th, I think, soon. So I'm getting really nervous that he's going to want me to sing. Oh, we have Elif from Turkey. And they want to know how we spent our time together throughout quarantine. Well, we've already mentioned board games. That was a big part of it. And they also want to know if we found any new hobbies in this period. Um, So I'd say one thing that we did that we'd never done before is Zoom pub quizzes. So this is a popular pastime for British people. We love going to the pub and we also love quizzes. So a lot of pubs once a month will host a quiz. So you have to get a team between I think one and six people. Yeah, normally, yeah. And you pay a fee And then I think the winner takes most of it, but normally you donate it to charity. (laughs) Yeah, we we loved doing that when we lived in the village, didn't we? That was brilliant, yes. Um, It gets the village involved, basically. Yes, it's really nice. It's normally the last Wednesday of every month. We have a really good friend who is amazing at pub quizzes, so we always used to get him on our team. Yeah, he is what you would call a ringer. He doesn't live in the village, but he's brought in from outside of the village to help your team. Is that what it's called? A ringer? A ringer. Where's that phrase from? I don't know, but it's it's like when you have a, a team, a sports team, um, and you bring someone in from another club who doesn't play for your club, that is called a ringer. Look, Will's teaching me English now. This is amazing. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, that was really nicely explained, actually. We started doing pub quizzes on Zoom with all of our friends, lots of different couples, and each week a different couple would organise the questions. And when it got to your go, your round, you went above and beyond, didn't you? Well, I, I spent a couple of late nights looking into, you know... Some everything. Th- everything, <laughs> yes, basically. No, no one likes an easy quiz. We Every- made it everyone should learn something new by the end of the quiz. That's how I feel. Yes, and then you put it in the next quiz that's with a different group of people. Exactly. Um, so what Will did is he looked through all of his friends' old Facebook photos, took the most embarrassing ones possible, <laughs> blocked out their face and had a round where you had to guess which person was in that photo and it was excellent we were in stitches so actually one thing involved you guys um one of will's friends it was his turn to make the quiz and he actually made a round based on my youtube comments um so he showed like crazy comments and we had to guess if they were real or not and it was hilarious because you know i do get some strange (laughs) comments every now and again um so Beware, if you comment anything strange, you might be in the next quiz because we're in lockdown again. Yeah, but you'll probably <laughs> never know about it. You'll never know. Tani from India asks if we like extreme sports like bungee diving, bungee diving, <laughs> bungee jumping, or sea diving. Bungee diving, God, that would hurt your neck, wouldn't it, if you hit the water? <laughs> well, I've never done that many ex- extreme sports. I've done skydiving, but it was indoor skydiving. 
so it wasn't real skydiving, not that extreme. Um, yes. You've done a lot more than me, though. I've I've done two bungee jumps. Um, Nutter. Oh, crazy. <laughs> uh, and one skydive. And all three were in New Zealand. I'm so glad you did that before I met you because I wouldn't, I would have been so worried. They were all awesome. One bungee jump was into a cannon. A cannon? Into a cannon. Like yeah. a one that you no, fire no, bombs no. Yeah, from? Yeah, I jumped into it and then they <laughs> shot me out of it. Sorry, a ca- canyon. A canyon? A canyon. <laughs> That's brilliant. Uh, so, a canyon. Into a cannon. <laughs> 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 Woo! <laughs> um, and then my second one was off a bridge at a smaller height, and then I went into the water at the bottom. Were you meant to? Yes. Okay, good. Well, it's done on it's done on weight. Oh, okay. If you're very heavy, um, you're most likely going to go into the water. But if you're not quite so heavy and not as tall as me, um, you've actually got to reach out and touch it. And then the skydive uh, was in Taupo in New Zealand and that was from 15,000 feet so I was free falling for a minute. Wow. Yeah, it was you don't you don't really believe you're doing it at the time. I it bet. doesn't it doesn't feel like you're free falling in the sky. I don't know if I'd do that. I um I just have too many things that I love <laughs> that I want to do again. Oh, Deborati from India. I just read out her name before and you said how nice it was. Say it again. It's a lovely name. (laughs) It's a lovely name. Um, She has asked, what is Britain's biggest festival? So I think the biggest celebration is Christmas for us. I wasn't thinking. Were you thinking like Glastonbury? Yes. (laughs) (laughs) Christmas, rubbish. Glastonbury... Yeah. <laughs> We've never Up been there. to Glastonbury. Okay, right. that's a hobby and a pastime, going to music festivals. They're very big uh, in the UK. I went to one when I was 16, Reading Festival, and somebody jumped on my tent and everything was squashed, but it was very good. But I was thinking more like cultural yeah, make, festivals. Make, makes a lot more sense, yes. <laughs> so Christmas is probably the biggest one. Um, but I'm also thinking of frequent festivals as well. We have a lo- we have a lot of beer festivals. Yes. So often pubs in the summer normally will put on an event called a beer and cider and normally sausage festival as well yep. to try and bring in more people for that weekend, make a big party of it. And I love those. They're great. You get to go there. They normally bring in lots of different ciders and beers from all around that you can try. Lots of sausages. Sometimes they do a hog roast as well, which is where they cook a pig, basically, and everyone gets given sandwiches with that. Yeah. What other festivals can you think of? I'm just thinking of music festivals now, art festivals. Yeah. We like a festival in the UK. This is a good one. Okay, we have Marina from Spain. She says, I'm from Spain and here it's always really hot. So I'm wondering, what do you do in England to have fun outside because it's raining basically all the time? Oh, Marina. How things have changed. (laughs) Yeah, so you're right. I noticed that when I lived in Spain, people did a lot more outside to an extent, apart from in summer where the heat was basically unbearable Mm -hmm. in Seville. Um, But we just make the most of good weather whilst it's there. So when it's a sunny day, Even if it's quite cold, you know, it's March or something, everyone's got their shorts on, people are sunburnt, people are sunbathing in a pub garden. A lot of our hobbies include pubs. We're having barbecues. Barbecues are a massive thing. So the difficult thing in the UK is that it's hard to plan trips because you cannot guarantee the weather. Um, So I know in Spain, most people went on, well, many people went on holiday within Spain because you knew that it was going to be sunny, perfect for a beach holiday whereas here i once booked over a week in the beach with my family and it rained the entire time i'm not kidding it was like being inside a cloud for the entire time beautiful beach beautiful place but you go on the wrong day and it's awful in the summer when a sunny day is predicted and especially at a weekend everyone packs the car drives two three hours to the nearest beach and 
you know roasts they, themselves exactly, <laughs> just roasts themselves until the monday where we're probably predicted rain yeah but now our summers are actually getting hotter uh we have days of over 30 degrees a bit more regularly now yeah which we aren't used to no so. we struggle our houses yeah. struggle yeah really struggle because our our houses are designed to retain heat in winter you know if you have the heating on you need lots of insula insulation but that means in the summer if the house heats up our house is all our insulation is working hard to retain all that heat still yeah. so i know the houses are built differently in hot countries okay we have anastasia or anastasia from great turkey name. lovely name that we've had a lot of beautiful name. names today um they want to know if there are any hobbies that we would like to take up in the future you go first okay well i've got one small one there's a new class at my gym um where they've got a little trampoline with handles i've shown you a video already because i was so excited about it yes. <laughs> and you jump to the beat to the music i am so excited to try that when it starts at the gym i think you'd be quite good in spin classes spin spin class i used to do spin but they don't do it at our gym now i go to a very small gym it's just a room where we do classes what would you like to do what would i take up i've mentioned golf i used to play a lot more golf when i was 18 so a few years ago now but I would like to take that up a bit more if you regularly had more time, if yeah. I had more time. Any other things that you haven't tried before that you would like to try, that you think you'd be good at? Two things I'd like to do. I'd like to learn and become fluent in another language. Ooh, which one? Well, Spanish would probably be the most helpful for our relationship. I would love that. But I was better at French at school. Well, no, that would be great. That means that we can go to Spain, I can speak Spanish, we can go to France. Yeah. You can speak French and I can learn it. I'd love that. Voila. Muy bien. <laughs> and uh, the second one would be uh, back to a musical instrument. Mm. Um, not necessarily the drums, but I'd quite like to be uh, good on a guitar or a piano. That would be cool. We were just talking the other day, I said that I'd like to learn to play the piano maybe if we have children and they're learning the piano i could learn with them i think that would be amazing right i think we've covered most of the questions um so thank you so much for all of those sub submissions they were amazing don't forget that i have created a pdf for you with all of the vocabulary that i have pulled out of our conversation today if you would like to download that click on the link in the description box enter your name and your email address, you sign up for my mailing list and it will be sent straight to your inbox. Did you enjoy today? I thought it was brilliant, yes. Thank I did as well. Thank you for having me on again. This is, this is becoming a second job for me. <laughs> yeah, I wish all jobs were this nice. Um, no, I think last time people noticed that you were quite shy, but I think this time they'll get to see more of the real you. Because it's nerve wracking, talking to a camera. Yeah, it's not something I do every day, just staring at... A big camera. light. A big light and a lens, yes. Yeah. Um, no, I still get nervous in front of the camera and I've been doing it for five years. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I think you're doing really, really well. Thank you. Let Thank me know you. if you'd like to see more conversation lessons with Will because they're really fun to do and we love answering your questions. Don't forget to connect with us on all of our social media. I've got my Instagram. Will's got his Instagram. I've got my Facebook. Don't worry about Will's Facebook, but we've also got my mailing list as well. Oh, and we should mention the personal channel because that's where you star the most. I, I dabble. I dabble. <laughs> dabble. Um, yes, we also have the personal channel where we do vlogs of our daily life on an English farm. So if you enjoyed this lesson and you learned a lot of vocabulary, all of those vlogs are subtitled, so that might help you a lot as well. We will see you soon for another lesson. Mwah! Will, you've got to do the kiss. No, I can just say, see you next time, guys. Okay, ready? See you soon for another lesson. Mwah! <laughs> <laughs>